Ships wait off the California coast, un unable to unload their cargo. Truckers are overworked and overwhelmed, often controlling, uh, confronting log jams. Rail yards have also been clogged with trains at one point backed up 25 miles outside of a key Chicago facility. Yup. This will affect Americans' lives a lot more in the latest White House tell-all book. News media needs to prioritize it. Then the latest White House tell-all book, the commercial pipeline that brings $1 trillion worth of toys, clothing, electronics, and furniture from Asia to the U.S. is clogged, and no one knows how to unclog it. As Americans fume, supply headaches are expected to last through 2022. And yes, MOJD is correct. And the JIT just-in-time issue for airlines have the exact same fucking container issue with goods... Uh, containers being filled to the brim with goods that are trying to come into the United States, yet there are shortages everywhere. This is 100% true. It's a much larger and much more significant problem than the Southwest CEO talking about the fucking canceled flights, by the way. That's where we're at right now. Trucks are breaking down and don't have parts. Why is it clogged? Is that a dumb question? So there's a couple different reasons. One, every part of the fucking supply chain is broken, okay? COVID ripped it. COVID ripped it across the board. There is a lot of demand for commodities there's a lot of we're in a we're in an asset bubble right now there's a lot of people that have money they want to buy shit with that money myself included i bought a fucking uplift desk for example the desk came in two parts i thought the full desk was going to be shipped like take three weeks ago i'm still waiting on the top of the desk i have no desk part of that is because we don't rely on domestic manufacturing we don't and we're fucked because of it so there is definitely a big issue with me not getting a desk, of course. But all joking aside, there's a big issue with, with every part of the supply chain. Truckers are overworked, like I said. Car parts are unavailable. There are shortages for computer chips. There are shortages for key items necessary. One part of the problem is that a lot of these Hassle, containers, Hassle, Hassle. from what I understand, and I don't know if this is a conspiracy theory or not, I need to look a little bit further into it. But from what I understand, China doesn't just control manufacturing. China also quietly has controlled the containers in all international ports for some time now. They control the container space in a lot of these, uh, in a lot of these locations. So they have purchased a lot of the container space in all domestic and international ports. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that there aren't any container spaces in these ports. There are, still are. But they've been able to successfully slow down goods from being shipped into countries. There's a lot of reasons for that, but largely it's because they own the containers and most of the boats are uh, in use or flagged in China. Yeah. So if they want to, they can literally slow down commodities from coming in to the United States. Why is this only a story now? It's been a story for a while. You were just asking for the China bad crowd to come stunlock you, aren't you? I mean, it's, it's just... Going into uh, some kind of fucking trade war with China was, of course, going to lead to uh, foreseeable negative consequences for the American consumer that would actually have significant political problems down the line. I work as an account executive at the second largest 3PL in the U.S. I've been pulling 60-hour weeks with no lunches since I finished training in July. Logistics is an absolute nightmare right now. Maliciously? It's not malicious, baby. That's international... <clears throat> The container issue isn't allocation of space, it's containers themselves. The shipping industry is literally out of containers. An aggressive fight over containers is causing shipping costs to rocket by 300%. IKEA Singapore operations called it a global transport crisis. It estimates 850 of its 8,500 products are affected by shipment delays. Chinese tech giant Alibaba's logistic arm, Kaniao, uh, launched a container booking service last week in response to the global shortage. What would benefit China? What would China gain from slowing goods transfer? I think it's a flex. Funny how you act so anti-China yet openly endorse LeBron James and his goons. I'll be unfollowing and unwatching. Thanks. What? I'm following since 44 minutes ago. That's pretty funny. That's a good meme, whoever this was. The ships coming into U.S. ports are flagged by the U.S. Uh, the problem is that our fleet is so small compared to others. We constantly bottlenecked. And now with the trade war is really starting to show. This is China showing its fucking, uh, uh, showing its, its uh, power, basically. It, its might. That's what happens when you don't have domestic manufacturing that all capital owners have fucking uh, foolishly and in a greedy capacity moved the overwhelming majority of their manufacturing overseas to China. That's how you fucking lose to China. And that's the reality. I mean, it's like Deng was right. There's no better representation of like uh, uh, Dengist values 
uh, coming back to haunt the United States in contemporary American society than the Obabe documentary about the fucking Chinese uh, manufacturing coming to America. Like, America has obliterated its own labor force so aggressively as a consequence of, like, capital owners being like, yeah, this is actually really, really smart to just, like, move and just transit goods back from China and produce them there. So much so that, like, it eviscerated the labor class. It eviscerated the working class here. No protections whatsoever. So much so that Chinese manufacturers can come back to America and take advantage of our lack of unionization. They can come back to America and produce goods in the United States of America. It's still a costly alternative, but they can do it simply for marketing, dude. Man, it's starting to feel like China is a world superpower now, and they're showing soft power like America has done for everyone for a century. Oh, for sure. It's definitely a sensor that's in every hauling truck in the country. This sensor requires microchips that's unattainable right now. Look into it. The trucks do not work without the sensor. Half of our fleet is down right now because of the I sensor. Said, it's my birthday. Can you wish me I mean, that also birthday. goes back to the my same issues, James. though. There are so many fucking... There are so many issues, like the microchip shortage. The container space issue is mainly in U.S. ports that aren't fitted for the largest, newest container ships, so they take longer. The offload ships are too long and stack too deep, and the ports are getting bottlenecked, and there's too much inventory sitting in ports, which makes it difficult to move the containers around to offload them. I do food ingredient sales, and this is mostly true. Also, the freights are backed up for the port of L.A. all the way to Anchorage. This isn't getting fixed before next summer. Can't the USA manufacture their own shipping containers for their imports? What are you going to do? I mean, it's too late now. You got fucking hella goods that are sitting on the port. You got to fix that problem. That's a bottleneck that you have to uh, fix. If only we had like better infrastructure, for example. I don't know. That could be fucking tight. We often talk about like the dangers of monopolization and antitrust. Well, we don't really. We do here in the Hasanami broadcast, but like most Americans don't give a fuck because they care about it from the consumer side. As long as you can get your fucking goods cheap, and easy and quick, you don't give a fuck, right? About how it's produced, where it's produced, what kind of negative consequences said, said uh, monopolization will have. Meanwhile, China has literally been vertically and horizontally integrating every aspect of commodity production under their control, consolidating it under their control for a very, for the past fucking half century. So what are you going to do about that? Or did I say horizontally? Horizontally. Shut up. And by the way, the best part about this, for the record, is that our capital owners, our business owners, our corporations substituted short-term profit for themselves and their shareholders for this situation to come uh, about. Like it was all, it was all consensual. They did this on, they did this because they were like, yeah, fuck yeah, of course we're going to take advantage of this. And that's, and here is where we're at now. Here's a video on the clog on LA's uh, uh, ports here. Let's watch this first though. Off the coast of Los Angeles, the reason you're paying more for everyday items and perhaps struggling to find some in the store, a vital parking lot in the Pacific. Container ships, mostly from Asia, stretching across the horizon. <laughs> to get an up close view, we rode along with LA Port Police Marine 12. It didn't take long, the radar suddenly filled with ships. That's it right here, they're, they're, they're right Come outside the, the outer harbor. 76 ships waiting for up to 10 days each to enter the port of Los Angeles or nearby Long Beach. Everywhere you look, there's a ship just sitting out here in the water. And 500,000 containers. But this is just one component of the stretched global supply chain that runs from Asia manufacturers across the Pacific to American consumers, now backed up and bottlenecked. Gene Soroka runs the Port of Los Angeles, America's biggest. How many ships a day now are coming in here? In the last month and a half, we're averaging 18 ships a day. That's nearly double the number that arrived daily before the pandemic. Making matters worse, there aren't enough truck drivers to take the goods from the docks to the nation's stores. The American importer cannot digest all of this cargo into their domestic supply chains. 50% of all truckers licensed to do business at the ports no longer come here. 
pirate away by internet and big chain retailers. It's not just California, New York's ports are also backed up and leading to a shortage of everything from electronics to toys to cars and car parts, building materials, clothing, and sending prices. That's why there's like a 200% markup on secondhand uh, used vehicles right now. This is higher. A lot of those holiday gifts you're hoping to give right now may be stuck sitting out here on the water. The question is whether they're going to be offloaded out of those massive containers onto the trucks, onto the rail lines, and to your local store in time for the holidays. So the books not showing up in time Easy or one, showing yeah. up one at a time um, would affect us greatly. Ashlyn Kristoff owns Serendipity and Muse House Retreat gift shops in Studio City, now hoping her orders arrive in time for the holidays. Nope. What we were being quoted was four to six weeks turnaround time, but some of the orders that I had placed earlier in the year I still have yet to see. Her own supply chain now backed up into the Pacific. Yeah, so the bottom line here, according to the experts, if you're thinking about holiday gifts, you should start probably ordering now. Don't wait till Thanksgiving. Don't wait until the run-up to Christmas and Hanukkah. Order now because there may not be enough when it actually comes time for the holidays. They may be stuck right out there. Guys, back to you. Yeah, Tom, that was a fascinating first-hand look there. Really quickly, how long do experts think this is going to go on? Yeah, the director of the Port of Los Angeles thinks this is going to extend well into next year, uh, maybe into the second or third. Let me tell you something, okay? Empires don't fucking die, just, especially now. Empires don't just die because they, like, lose battles, okay? They lose wars. They die when the fucking supply chain falls apart. I'm telling you right now, dude, there is one thing that keeps America going. I said this during COVID. I said this, before, uh, like, as the pandemic was popping off. And people were like, why are they giving people money? Because I was like, the number one thing that the American, like the, the American working class does is not produce, but rather consume. That's our number one goal. That's our only use to the rest of the fucking world. If we fucking can't consume, holy shit, dude. I cannot wait for motherfuckers. Like people will be murdered on Black Friday for sure. I can see that. USSR lost Afghanistan and also had supply issues that led to their collapse. What's happening to the U.S. right now? Keck, wait. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, hey, looks like the neoliberals couldn't even deliver cheap crap from China. Is there anything in their ideology that hasn't been completely discredited? You, if you can't do that, it's over. Like, I'm saying, like, it, dude, if you can't deliver cheap commodities at a fucking reasonable uh, time frame, motherfuckers will start breaking shit. America isn't remotely the same internally as the USSR. I mean, there's also an opportunity for America to recover from this. It just would require, it would require a lot of government interference, ironically. They call this the, do you listen to Trash Future that calls the treat economy and Britain is starting to go through it? Yeah, Chapo does it too. And they're right. I was listening to the latest Chapo episode where they talked about it, like our treats. Oh, this is so good. This is so fucking good. This is we've we've reached it. There is nothing better. I, I have to tweet this out. 